Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. I'm glad to be back with you. I'm starting to feel back to normal. I've had a cold the last week and a half. It's kind of kicked my butt. I don't know about you guys, but I swear the last like two months has just been constant between getting sick, had COVID early December, and I'm, I feel like I never fully recovered. Luckily, I'm starting to feel back to normal, which is exciting. And I've been thinking about how I want to make this video and kind of share some insights on something. So the hot topic, this new Ram 2025 Ram Charger, the plug-in hybrid electric truck, a game changer. A lot of people still don't really even understand what this thing is. I'm going to explain this in this video, but most importantly, I want to talk about something that I've read some of your guys' comments, and I've thought about this a lot myself. So I dug into this and tried to um, get a little bit of thoughts on why Chrysler and Ram made the decision to choose the powertrain they went with in the new Ram Charger. So I'm gonna expand upon some of the first video, which I'll include a link below where you can check that out if you want as well. But let's get into this. So some people have been asking me, why did Ram put the 3.6 liter Pentastar in the Ram Charger? Why not the new Hurricane? Why not a diesel engine? Why not any of these other engines? The answer is actually kind of simple. So when you think about what the Ram Charger is, you have to ask yourself, what is it? It's basically the Chevrolet Volt, but in a truck form. If you're not familiar with the original Chevrolet Volt, this was a genset. You had an engine attached to a generator, and then what powered the wheels were electric motors tied to a battery. It's all the Ram Charger is, but just in a bigger form. So then you'd say, well, wouldn't you want the new Hurricane engine? Wouldn't that be a better fit for a powertrain? Actually, it wouldn't be for a few reasons. When you think about how a generator operates, and an example of how do typical generators run, they run at like 3,000, 3,600 RPMs, maybe sometimes down to 1,800 RPMs. But it's not like you're looking for acceleration. You're not looking for performance. What you're looking for when you wanna run a generator is efficiency, lightweight, reliable, and just simple. And that's what the 3.6 liter Pinnastar is. This engine's been around for 13 years for Chrysler. I actually couldn't think of a better engine in Chrysler's platform to run as a generator engine than the 3.6 liter. Secondly, it's lightweight. You're not having to worry about turbos, oil lines for turbos, uh, high pressure fuel per systems, low pressure fuel systems, um, all the complexities of a modern powertrain. You have a simple one. The other thing I thought that would be kind of interesting is, well, why didn't they put a diesel engine? A diesel engine is lightweight, efficient, you know, a lot of this other stuff. Well, sometimes not lightweight. Well, that's simple also because if you look at a diesel engine, there's a super heavy exhaust system to meet emissions. You look at a modern diesel truck, these things have a $5,000 exhaust system that is heavy and expensive. That defeats the entire purpose of the hybrid vehicle. They want to keep it simple. This is just a picture. If you look at this, this is out of a, uh, a Ram truck. But now imagine you just have this simple engine sitting here, no transmission, no transfer case, simple, lightweight, aluminum block engine. And if you look, 90% of its torque is available at 1800 mm. RPMs. Generators run between 1800, 3600 RPMs. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. My guess is they're gonna use a pretty sophisticated inverter technology that's gonna allow this engine to have a variable uh, RPM range so that it can work well with that. But that's the reason why. There's also another thing this could be. Look at when this vehicle is coming out and look at the emission regulations coming out in the next few years. If we look at 2027 and beyond, these emission regulations are insane. Particulate matter, hydrocarbons, all the stuff that the government is going to force on the manufacturers. A 3.6 liter engine can meet emissions really quickly because it doesn't have a turbo to heat up. It's not a diesel engine. Diesel engines take a long time to heat up. The, the little GME T4, the two liter turbo, great little engine by Chrysler. This engine takes a long time to heat up, not a great fit for this application. So I think this is a good reason why, so I think you're gonna see, this is a good reason why Ram went with the 3.6 liter Pentastar. And if I had to guess, just imagine if Ford come out, came out with a hybrid truck or Chevrolet, what engines would you think they'll use? My guess is Ford's probably gonna use a natural aspirated V6, probably not a four cylinder turbo if, if the time comes that they're gonna do something like that. And what's GM gonna do? They're gonna do the exact same thing. 
And it's funny because GM has gotten rid of a lot of their V6s. The high feature V6 is going away and it's being replaced by the new 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo. And I don't think they have the 4.3 liter V6, which was replaced by the turbo max engine. So if GM took this approach of what uh, Ram is doing with a plug-in hybrid electric, kind of like a range extender, they're gonna have an interesting situation to mate a powertrain with it. But my guess is GM will take a different approach. As I mentioned before, this Ram Charger, it's a game changer, guys. I think it's super cool. And actually, last night I was playing around looking at uh, some of the numbers. So something I wanted to kind of share here. See the 690 miles of range? If you do the math, you might want to ask yourself, if you, do the, if you do the math, ask yourself, okay, you got 690 miles of range total. This is hybrid, electric, and uh, the gasoline engine running. Then ask yourself, well, when you run out of electricity, how much fuel are you going to burn? According to my calculations, if you look at this, and I'm going to try to find this here. Um, okay, so here's where it's going to get fun. So Ram is claiming 690 miles of total range. We can all guess that's under ideal conditions. It's not in the winter time. It's not an elect. You're not losing a ton of electricity. So let's just base it off that 690 miles of range. The fuel tank it looks like it's going to be 27 gallons, and they're also claiming between 141 and 145 miles of electric range. If you do the math on 690 minus say 145. Then you take that 540 miles, divide that by 27 gallons, they're still saying 20 miles per gallon. That's actually pretty good if you think about it. A standard Hemi truck today can't get 20 miles per gallon. So if they've got this little six cylinder in there and they still get that efficiency gains, man, I'm telling you, this thing is gonna be a hit. And the other thing I keep thinking about is, how is this thing gonna be, um, the other thing I keep thinking about is, how is this gonna be when you're towing a trailer. And I'm wondering with the electric motors, with the gasoline engine on, if you're out of range, I wonder if there's more efficiency with the electric motor being powered by the gasoline engine than just the gasoline engine sending the power through a transmission transfer case and rear drive axle. Could be interesting. Maybe you even get better fuel economy towing with the engine on powered by the electric motors. Anyhow, as more information comes with the new Ram Charger, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys. I've shared, as I mentioned before, I think this truck is a total game changer. I look at your comments and I see this, everybody's thinking the same thing. This is a truck that a lot of people could use. People day to day during the week, you're traveling, you're going to see customers uh, on the field, going to a job site, going hunting, recreation. 140 miles of range would work for a lot of people, but you don't have that range anxiety issue and I love it. This is the most awesome truck. and. I'm not gonna lie, I would love to have one when that time comes. So anyhow, thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, feel free to give me a like and subscribe. Have a good one.